From Hollywood, California, the Lux Radio Theater presents James Cagney and Pat O'Brien with Gloria Dixon in Angels with Dirty Faces. Lux presents Hollywood. It's melodrama we bring you tonight in the gripping chapters of Angels with Dirty Faces. The story of an obscure priest and a front-page lawbreaker enacted by Pat O'Brien and James Cagney with Gloria Dixon. Our drama is an adaptation of the great screen success filmed by Warner Brothers. Our orchestra is under the direction of Louis Silvers. And as special guest, you'll hear the celebrated writer and authority on crime, Courtney Riley Cooper. And now, a word about our product. Have you ever heard a woman say this about another woman? She certainly isn't a bit pretty, and yet she's, a, she's so attractive. Usually, it's very hard to say just what it is that makes one woman more attractive than another. So many things may be part of a woman's charm. Here's what Ginger Rogers says. Naturally, every woman wants romance, admiration, yet many a woman who could be attractive loses out because she neglects daintiness. I always use Lux Toilet Soap as a bath soap, too. It makes a wonderful beauty bath. This nice soap has active lather that leaves skin fresh, delicately fragrant. Try it for your daily beauty bath. It leaves skin sweet, protects daintiness. And now, the producer of the Lux Radio Theater. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to consult an atlas for the map of Ireland if either of tonight's stars happen to be handy. For in the honest faces of both James Cagney and William Joseph Patrick O'Brien are indelibly sketched the rugged contours of the Emerald Isle. There's a striking similarity, too, in the careers they've led. Both came to Hollywood from Broadway, both at about the same time. Both broke into big-time show business as chorus boys. Both can sing you a tune in the traditional tenor of the Irish. Or if you prefer, both can play it for you on a piano. Both are stars at Warner Brothers Studio, through whose courtesy both are here tonight. And their most successful collaboration is tonight's drama, Angels with Dirty Faces. Pat O'Brien's training for our play started at the age of nine when he attempted his first dramatic part and played an angel. Mr. Cagney's early years were spent in practically the same tough precincts that you'll hear about in Angels with Dirty Faces. Jimmy used to dive off docks for a swim in New York's East River, and the boy who taught him how was later signed up for an extended engagement at the big house. When our bantam star came to pictures, he required no instruction in fist swinging. The story is that between the ages of 11 and 17, Jimmy could never go to sleep at night unless he'd taken part during the day in at least one fight. Later, he used his right hand to play semi-professional baseball and hoped that someday it would hold the brush of a portrait painter, an ambition that has never been fulfilled. Pat O'Brien came to the footlights by way of Marquette University and the United States Navy. In New York, he shared a boarding house room with Spencer Tracy and the desperate responsibility of raising $5 a week for the rent. Off the screen, he's famous for his fund of anecdotes and his love of sports. Pat tonight plays Jerry Connolly. Mr. Cagney is Rocky Sullivan. And a very lovely young lady, Miss Gloria Dixon, is heard as Laurie. Her new starring role for Warner Brothers is in Waterfront. We ring up the curtain now, and the Lux Radio Theater presents Angels with Dirty Faces, starring James Cagney and Pat O'Brien with Gloria Dixon. A dead-end street in the slum district of a great American city. On the corner, weaving in and out of the maze of pushcarts, a newsboy calls the headlines of the afternoon edition. Rocky Sullivan Freen, Rocky Sullivan and Gangster, Freen today, three year time ended, Rocky Sullivan. Further down the dark canyon of tenements stands a church. In the soft light streaming through the stained glass windows, Father Connolly leads the afternoon rehearsal of the boys' choir. Very good, boys. Go now. 
next week at the same time. Hey, come on, hey, who, hey, who do you think you're pushing? Yeah. When I get you outside, I'll mobilize hey, you. Me and no one. Yeah. 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 Afternoon, Father. Well, son, what's troubling you? Oh, nothing much, Father. Only been bothering me about 15 years. Uh, what'd you ever do with those fountain pens? We snatched them in that freight car that night. What? Rocky. Rocky Sullivan, Rocky, you old... <laughs> Hiya, Jerry. What do you hear? What do you say? Oh, I'm fine. How are you, Rocky? All right. Don't let this paleness fool you. Well, same old place, huh? Fifteen years and it hasn't changed a bit. Remember old Father Boyle's vestry, Rocky? Remember it. He used to stand right where you are and ball a sour out of me. <laughs> well, I'm not going to ball you out. All I'm going to kick about is, why'd you stop writing to me? Oh, I'll be reasonable, Jerry. You know what happens to letters you write in prison. Everybody in the warden down to the screws reads them. And <laughs> what did I have to write about? Nothing happened while I was inside, and when I was outside, well, I figured you could always read the newspapers. It was always on the front page. Yes. Yes, I read all the newspapers, Rocky. Say, Jerry, I, I always knew your, your mother wanted you to be ordained a priest, and I guess the only thing that ever kept you back was me, but uh, how'd you finally come to do it? What gave you the idea? Oh, I don't know, Rocky. I was just riding along on top of a bus one day, and passing St. Patrick's Cathedral, looking down. <laughs> just got the idea, I guess. I got an idea on top of a bus once. Got me six years. <laughs> Come in. Say, Father, you're supposed to be down at the store. The fellas are all waiting for you. Oh, yes. Uh, run along. Tell them I'll be right over. Tell them to get started in the meantime. Okay, Father. Say, uh, what's this store racket, Jerry? You got the kids shilling for the parish? <laughs> uh, no. No, it's a pet scheme of my own. I, I run at a store, Rocky. Kind of a recreation center for the kids. Oh, it's a sort of a kindergarten place, huh? No, no, it's more than that. For the older fellas, too. Oh. You know, it's helped tremendously to keep a lot of those kids from becoming... You mean, uh, becoming mugs like, uh, mugs like me, for instance? <laughs> uh, will you be staying here for some time, Rocky? Oh, I don't know, I don't know, Jerry. It depends on little business I gotta take care of. Anyway, I gotta find a room. Mm -hmm. Uh, why not around here, right in the parish? Well, why not? No place like home, is there? Uh, all right. Come on. I'll walk down the street with you. All right, good. Come on, throw the ball over here. I'll slap your ears down. Come on, fellas. Well, well, 15 years. The same old smell. I bet they ain't clean this alley since I left it. Hey, Jerry, remember the time we swiped those pens? We beat it up that alley and right over the fence, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I got away. You got caught. <laughs> I never could run as fast as you. <laughs> you know, I've often wondered, Rocky, what if I'd been the boy who'd been caught that day? Well, you wasn't. No. No, I wasn't. Uh, uh, Rocky, why don't you drop in here at Mrs. Maggioni? She's got some furnished rooms. Mrs. Maggioni? I remember her. We took a lot of good lead pipe out of our basement. <laughs> well, I'll drop around tomorrow if you want me to. I swell. Oh, gee, Rocky, it's great to see you. Ah, uh, you too. You too, Father. Well, <laughs> so long. So long, Jerry. So long. Yes, what is it? I want to find out about it. Hey. You ain't Mrs. Maggioni. No, she's out. Just taking over till she gets back. What is it you want, please? I, uh, I want a room. Oh, well, there's one right down the hall this way. Oh, thanks. You know, there's something about your face that's kind of familiar. Nah, you've just been reading the funny papers. No, I mean that... Listen, sister. All I want is a room. Oh, well, that's fine with me. Here it is. Mrs. Maggioni, you'll give it a good cleaning. That's all right. I've seen worse places. Yeah, I guess you have. Huh? How'd you happen to come to this house? Oh, you want references, huh? Well, an old friend of mine sent me, Jerry Conley. Father Jerry? Wait a minute, I get it now. You, you're Rocky Sullivan. Yeah, that's me. You remember me? I'm Laurie Martin. Laurie Martin? That fresh chew with the long pigtails. Well, for crying out loud. Hiya, Laurie. Yeah, remember the time about 15 years ago when you pulled my hat down over my eyes and I said I'd get even? No, I don't remember that. No, oh, well, I do. Hey, what the... Hey, come back here. <laughs> cigars, cigarettes, cigarettes. I am sorry, sir, but you must dress in El Toro. These clothes will do. But only people in the evening dress are, Mr. What goes on here for you? This gentleman wants this to... This gentleman wants to see Jim Fraser. Who? Oh. Jim Fraser, your boss, the guy who owns this joint. Where is he? Who are you? Rocky Sullivan. Mean anything to you? Yeah. Come on. 
Hey, boss, Rocky Sullivan's here. Rocky Sullivan? Tell him I'm not in. Tell him... Hello, Fraser. Oh, Rocky. Well, uh, all right, Steve, get back to the job. Well, this, uh, this is a surprise, Rocky. Yeah. I uh, had the date on my calendar, but I thought you got out next month. Otherwise, I'd have been down to meet you. Oh, that's all right. Nice looking place you got here. Looks like you're in the money. Hey, you, uh, you know Matt Kiefer? Yeah, I heard of him. Got the town tied up. Can buy it and sell it, huh? <laughs> well, we don't buy it. We just sell it. Uh, sit down. Thanks. Got that dough, Fraser? Dough? Yeah, dough. When I took the rap for you three years ago, you had a hundred grand of mine. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, it'll be a matter of only a few days. The end of the week, you don't have to worry about it, Rocky. I'm not worried about it. I'll take a few days getting settled. I'll give you time to get that dough together and figure out where I come in. Where you come in? What do you mean? Which racket you want me to take care of, which section of town, and how much my cut is. Your cut? Yeah, we're partners, ain't we? You and me. That was the idea, wasn't it? I take the rap, you take the dough, use it to make connections for both of us. Wasn't that it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course, but uh, you got things a little mixed up, Rocky. You see, Mac Kiefer's the boss. If you want a spot in the business, you got to take it up with him. No, no, I don't take it up with nobody but you, Fraser. I'm picking up with you where I left off. That was the idea, and we're going to stick to it. You understand? Well, of course, but... Uh, but what? Uh, oh, come in, Mac. Thanks. This is Mac Kiefer, Rocky. Mac, I want you to meet Rocky Sullivan. Well, I'm pleased to meet you, Sullivan. I know all about you. You're okay. When did you get out? This morning. Fine. What are you doing? Looking around. Well, maybe I might have a spot for you. Yeah, that's what we were just talking about. Uh, where are you stopping, Rocky? I got a room over in my old neighborhood on Dock Street, uh, number 24. Well, um, I'll beat it now. I'll be up, say, uh, first thing Monday. Okay. Bundy? Yeah, yeah, that'll be fine, Rocky. All right. Uh, night, Mr. Kiva. Good night, good night, good night. Now, wait a minute. What is this, Fraser? That guy looking for a cut? He's looking for something, but it's okay. Don't worry. Hello. Get me Steve. Hey, what are you going to do? Leave it to me, will you? Yeah, but don't trip. Hello, Steve. Listen, that Sullivan guy just left. Put a couple of the boys on him. Tell them to watch their chance. Well, what else would I mean? We don't want that guy around. <laughs> Come on, come on. Fork over that two cents. Ah, that wasn't no seven. Oh, I was so. Give him the two cents. Shut up, Johnny. Now, listen, Bim, give me that two cents or I'll take it out of your hide, see? Ah, uh, here. Yeah, you better. Hey. Hey, look who's coming. Hey, Johnny. Ain't that guy the new tenant upstairs? Yeah, that's him. Start playing with a ball, Bim. We'll give him the hoist. What hoist, Soby? Ah, you dope. Bump into him. Keep him busy for a second. I'll frisk him. Oh, okay. Okay, Bim. Give him the rush. Hey, give me that ball. Hey, wow. <laughs> hey, what's the matter with you? Don't go pushing our Ah, you and... what? You what? Oh, oh. <laughs> Tough guy, huh? Yeah. Hey, Bib, give me that ball. Try and get it. Yeah, come on, <laughs> swing. Let's come get on, that. You, so... <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, you kids. Why, what's the matter, Mr. Sullivan? Those kids just rolled me. <laughs> Made me eat me wallet. <laughs> the great Mr. Sullivan. Well, that's too bad. Oh, no, it ain't. I'm going right over and get it back. Stand hey, back, stand back. Give me how much, Sophie? How much? 20, 25, 35. Gee, what a roll. There must be more than 100 bucks there. Yeah, 100 nothing. We're in a big dough now. What a whore. Six ways, don't forget. Six ways. Don't worry, you'll get yours, crab face. All right, get him up. Hey, what is that? Huh? Hey, gee, it's oh, him. Look out. Say your prayers, Muggs. Gee, Mr. Give us a break. I wasn't even there. Me neither. Shut up, you rat. Stop your squealing. All right, you chumps. <laughs> I'm not carrying no rod. But next time you try to hook a poke, make sure the guy doesn't know your hideout. Yeah. Yeah, wise guy, how did you know? Come here, sucker. You see that door? See those initials carved in the middle, R.S.? That's me. You... Say, wait a minute. Hey, you ain't Rocky Sullivan. Rocky Sullivan, can you imagine? He's trying to hook you. What a boner! Oh. Yeah, I guess the minute you saw us duck in the alley, you knew we were heading for the hideout. Yeah, I took the shortcut. what they call you? Soapy. This squirt here is Bim. This a swing. This palooka is hunky. I'm red. This is crab face. Crab for oh, sure. Glad right. to meet you, Rocky. Shut up, fellas. I want you to meet Rocky Sullivan. Hi, Hi Rocky. Rocky. Okay. Say, you took the room above us, didn't you? Number 24? Yeah, and you knew all the time I was living there? Sure, Johnny Maggioni told us. And you took a chance like that. Look, kids, never bother anybody who lives in your own neighborhood. You got an awful lot to learn. Well, you ought to be able to dish it out. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Hey, who's that? Who is it? Hiya, Jerry. Hello, Rocky. What do you, what do you say? Oh, Laurie told me you were heading this way. Yeah. <laughs> you know these kids, Jerry? Sure. Sure I do. Hello, Soapy. Hiya, father. Well, didn't take you boys and Rocky long to get acquainted, did it? Hey, looks like you and the father are old pals, huh, Rocky? <laughs> take a look at that door again. Right next to my name's the initial J.C. 
That's Jerry Connolly. No kidding. Hey, you mm-hmm. mean, Father, you used to hang out down here with Rocky? Oh, well, we certainly did. Of course, just now, we all hang out at the store, you know. I, uh, kind of hoped you boys would be down at the store today for the basketball game, maybe get into the block team. Nah, we're pretty busy today. What's the matter, Soapy? Why don't you want to get down to the game? Sounds like it ought to be good. Ah, for Pete's sake, what do we look like, cream puffs or something? Playing around with a basketball all of a sudden. Well, I'll tell you what. Tell you what. I'll bet you a buck to a plug nickel none of you can get the ball past the other team, and I haven't even seen him. Go on, we run him into the yeah, ground. We room. Hey, will you come down, Rocky? Yeah, sure. Okay, I got a nickel, and we'll take you up on that bet, Rocky. You're on. Sure, yeah, we'll yeah. all split the winning. Hey, Fair wait enough. a minute, we ought at least have a chance to practice up first. All, all right, boys. all right, boys, that's fine. The store's open. You can go over right now. Okay, fellas, let's yeah, go. We'll see you down, down there. Go ahead, kids. See you there. <laughs> Well, the young devils, I've worked on them for over a year, and I got nowhere. After ten minutes with you, I guess they'd jump through a hoop if you told them to. Maybe it's because I wear my collar frontwards. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, since you've been sponsoring my store, suppose we go over and see it. I want to show you my library, too. Laurie takes care of that. Laurie, say, what's she doing down there? What is she, a social worker? <laughs> no, not exactly. But she's worked awfully hard helping me run things. You ready? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Come on. Oh, Laurie, it's well game, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. You know, I, I've been meaning to tell you, kid, that uh, yeah, you didn't turn out to be such a bad-looking dish. Thanks. We're a social worker. But, uh, you know, I can't figure out why some smart guy hasn't snatched you off. What do you mean, some smart guy who's been in all the headlines? <laughs> yeah, sure, well, well, I gotta beat it. Uh, you gonna buy the house? Uh, yeah. Okay, come on, walk right. down with you. Hey, Rocky, watch out for that dame, she's a jinx. They put her last guy six feet under. What? Huh? Yeah, no kidding, they laid him out. Oh. Shut up. Come on, Laurie. Say, well, what, what does Soapy mean by that crack about you? Uh, you and some guy. Oh, he, he meant Dan, my husband. He got it, huh? Yeah, four years ago. What happened? Well, what happens when a guy gets mixed up with a bunch of cheap yeggs? You ought to know. What kind of guy was he? He was a swell guy when we were first married. But he wanted more than he could get driving a cab. There was a lot of easy money to be picked up using a cab on some jobs, so, so we got in deeper. One night, they tried to shoot it out with the cops. That's what always happens, isn't it? Yeah, maybe, but people who don't know their business, small time is that... Hey. What's the matter? Who belongs to that blue sedan parked down the street? Where? Oh, oh I don't know. Nobody around here. Yeah, that's what I thought. Laurie, is, is that old stone wall still up between these two houses? Well, yeah, but... Yeah. Now, good look, look. Make out this is your house and say goodnight to me and beat it in. Well, Rocky, Don't what... ask any questions. Do what I tell you. Good night, kids. See you tomorrow. Rocky, that car's moving. It's coming this way. Get going, will you? Get going. on. Beat it. Rocky! <laughs> Who is it? All right, all right, you don't have to... Rocky, move back, Frazee. That's right, one phony move and I'm going to let you have it. Rocky, I... Yeah, I ain't dead yet. I knew all I could get behind. It was kind of handy. Lucky me, huh? I didn't have anything to do with it, Rocky. It's the truth, Rocky. I swear to heaven. I ought to give it to you now, Frazier. Rocky, you can't. You can't. Stop crawling. You got me hooked for a hundred grand. I'm going to get that for you. Oh, sure, sure, of course. Eh? It's yours. I'll get it for you. All right, go ahead. Well, I, I haven't got it here. You, you don't think I keep that much around? I'll, I'll prove it to you, Rocky. I got a few thousand here in the safe. You, you're welcome to that. Now get you the rest. Shut up and get it open. Here. Here, you can see for yourself. Sit down. There, there isn't very much. Get over there and sit down. Hmm. Two grand. Yeah, yeah, that's all. And uh, those securities, I own some bonds. I don't forward bonds. What's in this book? Well, that's that's just oh, a... Oh, been collecting autographs, huh? Oh, some pretty important... Some very important people. Oh, that's nothing, oh. Rocky. It's it's just a few receipts, that's all. Yeah, quite a few. And from a couple of city officials that might be interested in know more about. Yeah, looks like you've been paying off the whole town. And you made them sign. That's how you held a club over them, huh, Fraser? Well, maybe I'd better hold a club. I'll keep this little book... Make things easier all the way around. Oh, now, listen, you... What's Keeper's number? His private number. Come on. Circle 0500. Now, look, I'll put you on, and you tell him I'll be up in the morning, and that you want him to pay me that hundred grand. You got it? Yeah. All right, and one wrong crack, just one, and you won't have to do any more talking. Hello, Keeper? This is Rocky Sullivan. Yeah. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> now, I ain't no morgue. Wait a minute. Fraser wants to talk to you. Here. Hello, Mac. Rocky Sullivan, over. Be at the El Toro in the morning. 
11 o'clock. That'll give him time to get to the bank. At 11 o'clock. I want you to give him $100,000 on my account. Mac, you'll do it, won't you? You've got to. Okay, and, and no slip-ups, Mac. Tell him it's important. Important to you. It's important. Important to me. Well, you, you're all set. Not yet, I ain't. I'll be set when I get that dough. Well, you'll get it in the morning. Yeah? But just in case I don't, I want to know where I can reach you. I'll be here. No, no, I don't think so. I got a spot all picked out for you. A little apartment over on 8th Street. You're staying right there till I collect. Well, you can't do that. Get you... your hat, Fraser. I don't know whether you know it, but this is kidnapping, Rocky. No kidding. Get your hat. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of Angels with Dirty Faces. Our stars, James Cagney and Pat O'Brien, with Gloria Dixon, will be back shortly. Now, in our brief intermission before Act Two. In the little white bungalow where the Smiths live, there's a family argument going on. For heaven's sake, Bobby, haven't you finished your practicing yet? No, I haven't. And what's more, I won't be finished for a whole half hour. You're just being mean and you know it. You know I'm expecting Bill and Gus. Yeah, and I know you're in love, and I know he's in love, and I know he's always hanging around, and I know... Oh, Bobby, please don't tease me. <laughs> oh, gee, sis, now, now don't cry. I'm sorry. Honest, I am. I'm glad I got a sister that's beautiful and, and the people fall in love with. Honest, I am. Yes, Bobby's secretly proud of his sister. She's one of those girls who knows it's important to make the most of her good looks. Important to take wise, regular care of her complexion. She uses Lux Toilet Soap because its active lather does a thorough job of cleansing. Carries away every trace of dust, dirt, stale cosmetics. It's foolish to risk cosmetic skin, dullness, little blemishes, and large pores. So use cosmetics all you like, but use Lux Toilet Soap regularly. It's worthwhile to care wisely for complexion beauty. Nine out of ten screen stars use Lux Toilet Soap. Here's Mr. DeMille. We continue Angels with Dirty Faces, starring James Cagney and Pat O'Brien with Gloria Dixon. With Frazier hidden away, Rocky Sullivan collected his ransom, $100,000 from Mac Kiefer. But then Kiefer acted quickly. After being assured that Frazier was free, he called in the police, and Rocky was picked up for kidnapping. Morning, paper, morning, paper. Rocky Sullivan arrested for kidnapping. Rocky Sullivan questioned on abduction charge. Paper, paper, paper. In Kiefer's office, Frazier, just returned from the apartment, sees the headlines for the first time. Two-gun Rocky captured, held under special guard, speedy trial assured. Mac, what is this? We're going to get that dough back, that's all. Mr. Rocky Sullivan goes up on a kidnapping charge. But we can't do that. Oh, no? I've already done it. But you don't understand. Sullivan picked me up at my home. He's got everything that was in my safe. The account books, receipts, names, addresses, everything. What's that? If he's prosecuted for the kidnapping, he'll talk. And he's got evidence to back it up. The whole town will be blown wide open. Are you dumb? All right. What are you waiting for? Get an order for his release and withdraw the charges. Go on, go on. Rocky Sullivan had been in the district only a few days before he kidnapped James Frazier, prominent attorney and playboy. $100,000 was the amount. Oh, gee. Hey, maybe that's what he gave you, Soapy. What? That envelope he gave you just before the cops grabbed him. Maybe that dough is in that envelope. Maybe it is, crap. Rocky, hey, hey, hey what is this? Rocky, what'd you do, break out? No, I walked out. Yeah, but it says in the papers... Never believe what you're reading in the papers, kid. First you're in, then you're out. Boy, they certainly can't hold you, Rocky. How about the envelope, Soapy? Yeah, yeah, sure, I got it. All right, let's have it. Okay. Here you are, just like you give it to me, Rocky. Hey, is that the hundred grand of paper said you got? Listen, kids, you don't know no, nothing about this, see? No, nothing. no, I don't know nothing. And you know what happens to guys that talk? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, Rocky, you know me, you know all right, me. All right, all right, all right. Here you are, Soapy. Here's a little chunk of this dough. Cut it up any way you like. Gee, Rocky, thanks. All right, so long. I'll, uh, I'll see you in a couple of days, kids. Okay, okay Rocky, so take good care of yourself. Here you, here you go, Bim, here's your cut. Fifty bucks, wow. Yeah, and the same for the rest of you. Fifty some millions. Boy, me old man never made that much in his whole life. Hey, what are we going to do with hey, it? Hey, this is burning a hole right through me here. I'm going to buy me a pair of me and play the brass Ah, nuts. shut up. Come on, let's get out of here. on the Where is it? 
me, Jerry. Come on in. Hiya, Jerry. <laughs> what do you always say? Well, certainly gave me a terrific scare, Rocky. Before I finished reading, you were arrested. There were new headlines and you were out. Ah, oh, there was nothing to it. Any guy with a record gets hauled in now and then, you know that. Just because you got nothing better to think of. <laughs> Looks like the kids are right. Said no jail could hold you. <laughs> Who? Soapy and his mob? No, no, no. <laughs> Some of the other kids down at the store. Uh, Soapy and his team were supposed to play that return game today. They haven't showed up. Rocky, you wouldn't happen to know where they might be, would you? Say, what am I, Jerry? That nice maid? Oh, Rocky, I didn't mean that. It... Well, I just thought they might be over here, sort of celebrating your release. After all, Rocky, it's almost a hero worship with them. Oh, nothing wrong with that, is there? Oh, I hope not, Rocky. Come in. Well, hello, Laurie. This is getting to be a big day. Yeah, well, I don't mind admitting I was pretty worried. You were? See, I ain't had nobody take that much interest in me in a long time. Well, Father, I finally located your precious angels for you. Well, where? Over at Murphy's pool room. What? Yeah, Soapy and his gang. Passing out beer to all the kids in the neighborhood and throwing dollar bills around like confetti. I wonder where they got the money. I don't know. You, you might ask them. Uh, well, I'll run along, Rocky. Mm-hmm. You coming, Laurie? No, Father, I want to talk to Rocky for a minute. All right, I'll see you later, will I, Laurie? Yeah. Rocky. Now, wait a minute. Look, kid, if you're as smart as I think you are, then we're going to get along, you're not going to ask too many questions. <laughs> Don't worry, I know all the rules. I know I'm backwards. All right, swell. Now, sit down a minute, will you? Maybe I had a couple of questions myself. <laughs> Rocky, you <laughs> crazy All right, sit right guy. down there. Come on, <laughs> sit down. Come on, come on. Hey, Give me that chalk or I'll lamb your ears off. Hey, the eight ball in the corner pocket. Buck, you don't. Yeah, Buck, I do. Look out, Bim. Wow. Come on, pay up, Crab. What law? Hey, hey, Soapy, where'd you guys get on the dough? We wrote the Santa Claus. And when we woke up this morning, we found it in our shop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, cheese it, cheese it, bottle of Jerry. Hello, boys. Giving a party, Soapy? Uh, yeah, yeah, mm. sure. Everybody invited? Why don't you have it over at the store? Well, because we're having it here. Mm hmm. How about the game today? Aren't you boys going over and get it started? How about it, Soapy? Nine ball in the corner. Come here a minute. Look at me. Where'd you get all this money you've been spending? You didn't come by it honestly, I know that. Hasn't anything I've said to you in the past few years meant anything to you? Don't you believe me when I tell you that hanging around pool rooms, spending money you've gotten in some underhand, crooked way, trying to be big shots and tough guys, that it won't get you anywhere except eventually in jail? What do you say, boys? Come on along with me and... Cut out this stuff, and let's get together at the store and figure the whole thing out. Look, Father, there's nothing to figure out. We're staying here. Well, all right. So long, boys. <laughs> What's the matter, Father? Couldn't you get the kids to heaven with you? <laughs> I don't often have to do this. Oh. That might help you along, mister. That's, uh, that's what I want to talk to you about. Hey, look, you got the wrong slant, Laurie. You've been listening to a lot of junk about crime don't pay. Oh, don't be a sucker. That stuff's for yaps and shoestring. It's not for people like us. Look, kid, you got some glad rags, you know, something fancy, an evening gown, something like that. Well, get it on. We'll step out and do a little celebrating tonight, huh? What'll we be celebrating, Rock? Oh, this whole business. After all, <laughs> you don't get on the front page every day, do you? No. You don't get away from cops every day either, Rock. Yeah, you're doing your smart. Come on, kid. Come on, Laurie. It's uptown for us. Up you see those nice white lights. That's where we belong. You and me, Laurie. You and me. Come on. <laughs> 32 on the red. Oh, uh, gun give the lady a stack of blues. Yes, sir. Hey, Rocky Sullivan. Yeah, what? My keeper says he'll see you now. Where is he? In the office with Fraser. Here you are, Laurie. Try your luck. I got some business to do. I'll be right back. Seeing as how Jim owed you the dough, and it all being a... Misunderstanding, we decided to call it square, Rocky. Square all around with no hard feelings. You guys want to talk business? Yeah. All right, let's talk. Now look here, Rocky. Uh, what about those accounts you took from my safe? I figured out as a kind of insurance. You know, just in case you guys change your mind. Okay. Now, what do you want, Rocky? Nothing from you, Mac. Nothing. Just the original agreement between Fraser and myself. 50% of his share and everything. Well? All right. And I'll take good care of those accounts. And I wouldn't try any more tricks, Fraser. Be kind of foolish. Because I'm giving those books some very special attention. Good night, boys. Having a good time, honey? Yeah, fine. You like this place? Why wouldn't I? Well, uh, 
I own a piece of it now. You... Rocky. Rocky, maybe you are smart enough. Look, baby, how'd you like to give up that two-for-nickel job of yours and move in here? For doing what? Oh, be a sort of hostess in the gambling room, walk around in an empty dress, play a little, get the swanks playing. Give you a hundred a week in expenses. Rocky, it's... Well, it's... I know, I know. Jerry's been giving you an earful, but he don't need you down there anymore. I sent him ten grand this afternoon. He can start a real social joint now. You... Ten thousand dollars? Yeah, but, but don't tell him, will you? Don't tell him. I mean, don't tell him I sent it. Uh, I signed it. A friend. Oh, Rock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know. Now, uh, what about the job? It's waiting for you. Okay, Rock. Swell. Besides, uh, I need at least one friend in this place. Come in, Jerry. Hiya, kid. What do you, what do you say? They tell me he was outside. I say, what's the idea? Come up to try your luck? Mm-hmm. I haven't got any money except this, and it isn't mine. Ten grand? Where'd you get a hold of all that? Where did you? Huh? Take it, Rocky, and thanks, but I'm afraid I can't accept it. Say, what's the matter? You silly or something? What's all this about? That ain't my money. I know that, Rocky. That's why I can't take it. Oh, now come down to it, will you? You blow in here, flash that roll on me, almost knock me over with it, and then tell me it's my dough and you don't want it. Rocky, you've got a great poker face. But don't forget, I've known that face for a long time. Oh, what's the use of pretending, Rock? You force Fraser to get you $100,000. Everybody knows it, Rocky. All right, so what? What's the difference where the joke came from? First of all, it's mine. Fraser owed it to me. Second, it's better you should have a chunk of it than him or me. All right, it's hot, but nobody's going to know that. Only you and me. That's just it, Rocky. Oh, don't be such an angel, will you? You want to build that center of yours so bad? Go on, get it started. I want to build it very badly, Rocky. But I don't want to build it on rotten foundations. Inside the center, my boys would be clean, but on the outside, they'd be surrounded by the same smelly corruption, crime, and criminals. Uh, yes, criminals, Rocky, yourself included. Criminals on all sides for my boys to look up to and worship, admire, and imitate. What earthly good is there for me to teach that honesty is the best policy when they see all around that dishonesty is the better policy? That the racketeer and gangster are respected and treated just like successful businessmen, like a popular hero. You and the Frasers and Keepers and all those corrupt officials you've got in the palm of your hand? Yes, and you've got my boys, too. And whatever I teach them, you show me up. You show them the easiest way, the quickest way to succeed is to do it with a gun or a racket. Well, I thought I could cure this thing from the bottom up, but I can't. So now I'm going to do it from the top down. Yeah? How? Rocky, I'm going to use your case as a crowbar to pry open and uncover this cesspool. I'm going to force the law, corrupt or not, to indict and prosecute and bring this mess into the clear light of day. There's going to be a lot of people step down, fellow. And if you're in the way, Rocky, I'll be sorry. But you're going to be stepped on just as hard. Hmm. All right by me, Jerry. You go to it. But you've got about as much chance of getting an indictment as I have of getting into the Bible Society. You'll find nobody gives a hoot about the whole thing. You'll hear them laughing at you. But go ahead, go to it. And if I'm in the way, why, do your stepping just as hard as you like. I will. Uh, Rocky, shall we uh, shake hands? You know, just for being honest and for old times' sake. Sure. Good luck, Jerry. Happy hunting, kid. <laughs> Pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. In a few moments, we'll hear Act Three of Angels with Dirty Faces, starring James Cagney and Pat O'Brien with Gloria Dixon. Now, it's intermission time. But before we introduce our guest of the evening, I want to ask the women in our audience a question. Have you ever really studied the lather of a complexion soap you use? Is it a rich, close-textured lather? Is it the kind of lather that will remove every bit of dust and dirt from your skin? Lovely skin is too important for you to risk choked pores. Because that's what brings the dullness and little blemishes that mean cosmetic skin. Follow the advice of lovely women everywhere 
and use the soap with active lather, Lux Toilet Soap. This gentle white soap removes dust and dirt thoroughly and helps keep your skin smooth and soft. Use cosmetics all you like, but use Lux Toilet Soap regularly. And now, our guest is presented by Mr. DeMille. On the subject of crime, Courtney Riley Cooper is probably the most widely read and most vigorous writer in America today. A close friend of J. Edgar Hoover, our nation's head G-man, he's also acquainted with people on the other side of the law and has known scores of the country's most notorious criminals. His latest book, Designs in Scarlet, is the result of a personal countrywide investigation into activities that tempt young people to go wrong, a condition for which we all must assume responsibility. When Mr. Cooper and I were writing on one of my pictures several years ago, we discussed many times the problems of youth and crime. He's a straight talker, and there's none better equipped than he to talk to us on that most vital problem, crime. We go to New York City and welcome Courtney Riley Cooper. I have happy memories of that association, Mr. DeMille. You know, I have just come up from my home in the Deep South, where they have a very descriptive saying... Down there, they believe that one of the worst things that can happen to a youngster is to be born with what they call a mouthful of want. If you could have only have walked through as many prison cells as I have, you would realize how many young people have possessed this mouthful of want and taken the wrong way to gain their ambitions. And the age limit in crime is steadily becoming lower. When I first became a police reporter a good many years ago, it was unusual to see a man go to prison who was less than 35 or 40 years of age. But today, nearly 19% of all our crime is committed by youngsters. They steal half the automobiles and commit nearly a third of the robberies, holdups, burglaries, and larcenies. And they pay for it. In one prison, the hard-boiled guards no longer refer to the condemned cells as death row. They call them the kindergarten because so many young boys are there. Incidentally, most of these young people are underfed and undernourished, either physically or mentally. They come from homes or neighborhoods where there's been a lack of guidance and proper discipline. And no matter whether they are from the biggest of cities or the smallest of towns, they are from a type of slums which should be eliminated. We must all engage in a nation fight against ignorance, wrong thinking, lack of guidance, hero worship for the fellow who gets what he wants, no matter how he does it. Hundreds of thousands of youngsters are being fed on a wrong mental diet. Because of this, somewhere in America, tonight, right now, right this minute, boys and girls are committing major crimes at the rate of one every two minutes. And half these boys and girls are actually doomed to a life of habitual criminality to be sent to reformatories, prisons, and even to the death chamber. Somebody will stop this. And that somebody is every decent citizen in America. Clean living... Honesty, integrity, should be as great a basis of education as reading and writing. Hatred for criminals and disgust for crime should be as necessary a mental attitude as patriotism. This cannot happen as long as street corner gangs of dirty-faced angels worship the Rocky Sullivans of their block. Sure, it'd be great if we could only clean up our slums, the physical ones where poverty and hunger stalk, and the mental ones, which are even more dangerous. It would be wonderful if we could put in their place a love of honesty, of earnest endeavor, of eagerness to get ahead by decent, honorable means. To do this, we must all work together to achieve certain results. Now, for instance, I believe we should make murder a federal offense. We should take all police work out of politics. And we should dedicate ourselves to more good homes and fewer bewildered ones. But above all, we must stop glorifying crime and tell the truth about it. That it is cheap, cowardly, miserable... We can do these things, and we must do them. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. Keep up your fight, Mr. Cooper. Back now in Hollywood, we hear the third act of Angels with Dirty Faces, starring James Cagney and Pat O'Brien with Gloria Dixon. Several weeks have passed, and Father Jerry has carried out his threat. With the aid of a public-spirited editor, he's placed the problem directly before the people. An organized war against crime and corruption. Laurie is frightened. Desperately, she pleads with Rocky to give up his share in the rackets. You see what's happening, Rocky. This thing's going to grow. 
I know, I know. Jerry means it this time, and there's, there's no holding him back. And what am I going to do about it? Come down to earth, Rocky. You can't go on kidding yourself forever. Look. Look, Rocky, you've got all the money you can spend in five years. Let's get out. What for? Well, Jerry's going on the radio tonight to demand a grand jury indictment. They'll have a warrant out before the week's over, and you on the witness stand grilling you on this kidnapping business. You'll be nailed. <laughs> you know, baby, you're getting a lot of gray hairs over nothing at all. Oh, Rocky, snap out of it, will you? I'm afraid. And I don't want to lose you, Rocky. Don't worry, kid. You won't. <laughs> You've got to listen to me, Father Jerry. Why, they'd give you money to build a model center here near the church. They're influenced to help you pull down the tenements and build decent apartments in their places. Oh, I know, Laurie. I know. Well, aren't those the things you want? Isn't that why you started all this trouble? No, Laurie, I don't want bribes. Well, then what do you want? What are you hounding him for? What are you trying to send him to prison for life for? You can't do that to Rocky. I won't let you. It isn't Rocky's fault, Father. He was just a kid who made a mistake and got sent up to a reform school. But he isn't bad. Not really bad. You know that. And and no matter what he is now, or no matter whether he's right or wrong, we we both love him, Father. Yes, Laurie, we love him. I've loved him since we were kids, six years old. We worked together, fought together. And we stole together. Oh, I don't blame Rocky for what he is today. But for the grace of God, there walk I. Oh, I'd do anything in this world to help him. I'd give my life for him if it'd help. But it wouldn't, Laurie, it wouldn't. There'd still be these other boys I don't want to see grow up like Rocky did. They have lives too, Laurie. I can't throw them away. I can't. <laughs> thousands are listening to this program tonight is proof to fling in the teeth of those cynics and skeptics that the public does care and does propose to do something about the appalling conditions I have tried to describe. Guy's going strong, Mac. Yeah, we won't be tomorrow. We're going to take care of him tonight. Yeah, I'm talking to your hat. He's not one of your mugs you can push around. Forget it. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Tonight we have in our power to ask definitely incriminating questions of these officials and the power to demand satisfactory answers. What really is the truth in the case of the racketeer and gunman, Rocky Sullivan? Why did the police release him so suddenly with all the evidence they had piled up against him? Why does the prosecutor's office refuse to investigate? Tomorrow the new grand jury will meet, and tomorrow these questions must be answered. Turn it off, Fraser. He ain't gonna appear at no grand jury tomorrow shooting off his mouth. I say he gets it tonight. Not while I'm around. I'll wait, both of you. There's no sense in running ahead of ourselves. Maybe we don't have to go that far. Don't forget there's all kinds of grand juries and there's all kinds of ways to handle them. There's no sense going off the handle, Mac. Sure, sure, only I want to see some action. I don't care how we stop that guy, only I want him stopped. All right, fix it any way you like. But lay off the rough stock, Mac. That's out. I'll, uh, I'll see you later. So long, Fraser. So long, Rocky. I hope you were stolen just now, Fraser. Because I meant what I said. Of course I was stalling. But look, you can't just bump this priest off. They won't stand for it. It got to look like an accident. Yeah? I couldn't beat a murder rap now for any of us, but uh, I could beat it for a hit-and-run driver. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I get it. Call Steve and tell him. Yeah. Get your hand off that phone. Rocky. You're a smart lawyer, Fraser. Except you should have made sure I left. Get over there. Rocky, don't. Don't do it. I'll do anything, anything. Oh, no, you won't. This is your last double cross, Rat. No. I told you his hands off that priest tonight. Don't shoot. Don't. And you wouldn't believe me. Drop that gun, Rocky. Make me drop it. <laughs> nice shooting, Keeper. You almost hit me. Oh. oh. Steve. Steve. Steve, this is Keeper. Get the cops. Sullivan. Rocky Sullivan. Hey, yeah, tape bag, thanks to kills too. Rocky Sullivan captured after the gunplay. Tape bag. Rocky Sullivan captured speedy trial assured. Rock 
57 found guilty. Gangster, guilty. 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 Gee, Sophie, do you think they'll burn him in a chair? Nah, don't be a sap. They can't build a dead hostage a whole rocky. You mean he'll blow and make a getaway? Just wait. That's all. Just wait. Hutchie Sullivan sentence! Sullivan to get chair! Ain't the sentence to die in mud! Boy, I bet Rocky shows them mugs how to die. Sure he will. Remember what he said at the trial? He said he'd spit in their eye. Yeah, and he'll do it too. Ha! <laughs> Rocky, will laugh at those guys. Rocky Sullivan dies in mud! Rocky Sullivan dies next week! Rocky Sullivan dies tomorrow! Rocky Sullivan dies tonight! 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 tonight. 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 Hey, Sullivan, that priest pal of yours is here. All right, get out. Listen, big shot, you got only five minutes, so don't stall around. Five minutes to that hot seat, and I'm going to tell the electrician to give it to you slow and easy. Get out of here. Somebody get this screw heel out of here. Get him out. Get him out. Get him out. Get him out. Hello, Rocky. Hi, Jerry. What do you hear? What do you say? Uh, how do you feel? Oh, like a million. If it wasn't for just one screw around here that keeps putting the needles in me. Uh, how's Lori? Taking it kind of hard? Naturally. She loves you, Rocky. Yeah, poor kid. Never did get a decent break. I tried to give her one, but all I gave her was a heartache. You don't want me to administer extreme unction, Rocky? No, no, Jerry. We'll, we'll skip that. Well, then listen, Rocky, there isn't much time, and I want to ask you a last favor. Ain't much left I can do, Jerry. Yes, there is. Perhaps more than you could do under any other circumstances. Go ahead and spill it. If you have the courage for it, the kind I know you have. Oh, it ain't going to mean much to walk in there, don't you mean? Oh, I know that, Rocky. It'd be like sitting down in a barber's chair. They're going to ask me if you got anything to say, and I'll say, yeah, sure. A haircut, a shave, and a massage. <laughs> You're not afraid, Rocky? No, they'd like me to be, wouldn't they? Uh, I wish I could oblige them, Jerry, but I can't. You gotta have a heart first to be scared, and I don't think I got one. I left that after me a little chunk at a time, in all the jails I've been in. But, Rocky, suppose I asked you to have the heart to be scared. What do you mean? Suppose at the last minute those guards had to drag you to the chair, screaming and begging for mercy. Suppose you turned yellow. Turn yellow? Say, what's got into you, Jerry? You were just worrying about me having courage. I know, Rocky, I did. But I mean a different kind of courage. The kind of courage was born in heaven. I still don't know what you mean. Rocky, when I came up here, a car of the boys saw me off the station. Sophie, Bim, Johnny, and all the rest of the kids. You know what they said to me when I left? They said, Father, tell Rocky to show him up there how to take it. Tell him to show the whole world the stuff a real guy has made of. Tell Rocky we're pulling for him and go out laughing. So what do you want? I, I ain't going to let him down if that's what's bothering you. I want you to let him down, Rocky. You've been a hero to those kids and to a lot of other kids all over the country all through your life. Now you're going to be a hero to them in death, too. That's what I want to prevent, Rocky. Just a minute, Jerry. You want me to pull an act? Turn yellow so, so those kids will think I'm no good? Yes. Yes, I want them to despise your memory, Rocky, and to remember you as a yellow coward rather than as a glorified hero. To be forever ashamed of you. You understand? Oh, you ain't asking much, Jerry. Oh, yes, I know what I'm asking, Rocky, but I thought maybe... Well, on account of being kids together, you might want to join hands with me in saving some of those boys from ending up here. Oh, it's a great idea. A great idea, but you, you asked me to throw away the only thing I got left in the world. The only thing they haven't been able to take away from me. You want me to give them newspaper sob sisters out there a chance to tell the whole world another rat turn yellow. Well, you're asking a little too much. I won't do it, Jerry. You work it out those kids some other way. Oh, but I can't reach all the kids, Rocky. Thousands of hero-worshipping kids in a thousand slums in a thousand cities. Oh, don't give me that humanity stuff again, Jerry. I did enough of that in the courtroom. I opened up on everything. Name names, gave the load down on the whole dirty mess. Now, what, what more do you want? Oh, God knows I haven't the right to ask for anything more for myself, but for... Well, Joe. All right, Rocky. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jerry, you, uh, you figuring on going in with me? You want me to, Rocky? Yeah, Sure. Gonna be kind of lonesome walking down that last mile. But, uh, look, kid. Do me a favor, will you? Just one. Don't let me hear you pray. Promise me that, Jerry. I promise. And, uh, you say goodbye to Lori for me? Yes. Come on, wise guy. Get away from me. Get this screw off me or I'll bust this face in. It'll be the last face you see, big shot. And it'll be laughing at you. Don't come near me in this, crew. I'll beat your brains out. All right. Step back, Edwards. 
You take his arm, Thompson. boy, Rocky. Take your own company. So long, fellas. I'll be waiting for you all. Come on, Rocky. Come on, Rocky. Come on, Rocky. Come on, Rocky. Yeah. This is what they call a last mile, Jerry. But it's, uh, it's kind of a short one. Rocky, what I said before, no. Rocky, please. No, I tell you. No one will ever know, Rocky. No. Now, shut up. Stop here. Go ahead, Rocky. Rocky, please. Okay, Jerry. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, no. No, no, don't kill me. I don't want to die. Oh, please. Don't let me die. I can't. I can't. Oh, let me go. Please, please. I don't want to die. Don't kill me. Please don't burn me in that chair. Don't burn me in that chair. I don't want to die. Goodbye, Rocky. May God have mercy on you. Rocky dies yellow. Rocky dies yellow. Cowards, death, three witnesses. We know all about it. Rocky dies yellow. At the fatal stroke of 11 p.m., Rocky was led through the little green door of debt. No sooner had he entered the debt chamber than he tore himself from the guard's grasp and flung himself on the floor, screaming for mercy. As they dragged him to the electric chair, he clawed wildly at the concrete floor with agonized shrieks. A picture of, of utter contempt. Rocky Sullivan died a coward's death. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Not one rotten word of it. It's the same in the other papers, too, Sophie. And they said it over the radio. I don't care what they said. He didn't die that way. Oh, not Rocky. He couldn't, I tell you. It's a lot of lies. Hello, boys. He's Father Jerry. Hey, let's ask him. He ought to know. He'll tell us what happened. Father Jerry, you were there. You saw it. What happened? Did, did Rocky die like, like they say here in the paper? Like a... Like a yellow rat? It's all true, boys. Every word of it. Then... He died like they said. Then, then Rocky, he was a rat. <laughs> Boy, what a chump I was. I thought all the time. I thought Sophie, that... I'm going to have choir practice tonight. I'll expect to see you all there, I hope. All of you. Yeah. Yeah, sure, Father. We'll be there. Okay, Father. Okay. Father Jerry? Yes, Laurie? I know about Rocky. I knew you would. And now, let's say a prayer for a boy. A boy who couldn't run as fast as I could. play has an epilogue, starring James Cagney, Pat O'Brien, and Gloria Dixon as themselves. And here they are. You know, Mr. DeMille, it was quite a shock to us to think that the Lux Radio Theater would do this play we've just finished. Shock? Well, if there's anything wrong with the play, don't you think you're a little bit late in bringing it up? Oh, don't get us wrong, C.B. There's nothing the matter with the play. It's just that, well, dirty faces on a Lux program? <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> uh, we're not out of here yet, Jimmy. <clears throat> Wouldn't surprise me at all if Mr. DeMille suddenly produces one of his bathtubs and throws us all into it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll overlook this feeble effort to twit me on my bathtubs, Mr. O'Brien. After all, I must remember that we're temporarily neighbors now at Paramount. Yes, that's right, but I notice that Paramount is courting Warner Brothers. 
At Warner's, I work with Jimmy and Angels with Dirty Faces. Then I go to the other extreme and do a picture for them called The Devil on Wheels. Now Paramount wants me to the skies again a little number called Heaven on a Shoestring. They're all bent on keep me off the face of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. We started off by talking about Lux Soap, and before we're completely <clears throat> sidetracked, there's something I really want to say to Mr. DeMille. It's just that I think that Lux Soap is about the grandest care under the sun for any girl who wants to keep her complexion looking its best. I use it, and that's what I think about it, Mr. DeMille. And coming from one so lovely, that's, that's doubly appreciated, Gloria. But about this play we've done, it seems a long time since a play has brought home so forceful a moral in such dramatic fashion. What do you all think about it? Well, it seems that pictures really are beginning to educate instead of simply amuse. Maybe Angels with Dirty Faces helped some kid somewhere to get the right kind of a start, and maybe it also helped people to remember the really great and unselfish work that's going on without publicity, without fanfare, by men like the one called Father Jerry. Yes, and I was just thinking that it's rather a coincidence that we should have done this play on this particular night. It comes between two anniversaries, both commemorating men who set a kid's imagination on fire. Yesterday was the anniversary of Lindbergh's landing in Paris. Tomorrow is the anniversary of the death of Captain Kidd on a scaffold. Daring men, both of them, but one happened to be on the wrong side, like Rocky Sullivan. When boys learn there's just as much excitement in doing the right thing, that piece of furniture called the electric chair will soon go out of style. Good night, C.B. Well, coming back. So long, C.B. Bye, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> Bye back to us soon again, Angel. A particularly important announcement about the play and stars coming to you next Monday will be given presently by Mr. DeMille. Heard in tonight's play were Frank Nelson as Frazier, Lou Merrill as Mac Keeper, Frankie Darrow as Sophie, Cy Kendall as a guard, Ross Forrester as Steve, James Eagles as Hunky, Frank Bielan as Crab, Joe Brown Jr. as Johnny, Harris Berger as Bim, Jackie Morrow as Red, and Forrest Taylor as Kennedy. Gloria Dixon appeared through courtesy of Warner Brothers Studio, where James Cagney has just completed Each Dawn I Die. Harris Berger is from Universal Studio, and Louis Silvers from 20th Century Fox Studio. He directed music there for young Mr. Lincoln. Be sure to listen to the new Lux Daytime Radio program, The Life and Love of Dr. Susan. The makers of Lux Toilet Soap bring you this enthralling story about the love and problems of a young, attractive woman doctor every afternoon, Monday through Friday. Look in your newspapers for the time and station. The Life and Love of Dr. Susan comes to you in addition to the Lux Radio Theater. Here's Mr. DeMille. It's an unusual program we bring you next Monday night, not only because of the importance of our stars, but because our play is one which has only just been released. It's our adaptation of the new Columbia Pictures Corporation film, Only Angels Have Wings, which incidentally has no connection with angels with dirty faces. They're different angels. The story is a highly dramatic romance, a thrilling adventure on land and in the air, played against a colorful South American background. And our stars playing the same roles they do in the picture are Cary Grant, Jean Arthur, Thomas Mitchell, Richard Barthelmus, and Rita Hayworth. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Jean Arthur and Cary Grant in Only Angels Have Wings with Thomas Mitchell, Richard Barthelmus, and Rita Hayworth. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs>